Hello. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to relate the physics of multiphase flow and pore's medium, particularly the wettability of the pore space, to what it means in terms of local displacement efficiency, which is encapsulated by solving the buckley leverett equation. So we're not going to go through the mathematics in this video. What we're going to do is we're going to try and have some physical insight into how we relate pore scale phenomena to what it means at the large scale. So to do that, um, I have prepared some slides. So we'll do that. We'll get the slides ready. So we'll put on the uh, slideshow. And here, at least so that we're um, on the same page, or at least on the same slide, um, we'll show the equation. So the first equation is the single phase Darcy law relating uh, a flux of volume per unit area per unit time to a pressure gradient with the mobility being the permeability divided by the viscosity. For multi-phase flow, we have the same relationship where the P labels the phase, and we have a relationship between the volume of phase P flowing per unit area per unit time, the Darcy flux, and the potential gradient on that phase. And as well as the permeability, we introduce a new parameter, which is the relative permeability. And that's a function of saturation, a function of how much of phase P we have. Okay. And um, there's also a capillary pressure. There's a pressure difference between the two phases. But that's not going to be the focus of this presentation. So before we start, let's just talk about the measurements. How we measure relative permeability is as follows. We take a, a, a sample of rock like this and we inject two phases, oil and water, through the rock until we reach what's called steady state. And steady state is when I'm injecting the oil and water in the inlet, it's coming out the outlet, and within the rock, there is no change in either the pressure difference across the fluids or indeed in the saturation, okay? And then what we do is we simulate a displacement sequence. So what we're going to show in this video is where we have water initially present and oil. So it's like the initial state of a, a, an oil reservoir. And then we increase the relative amount of water that we're injecting. So we increase the what's called the water fractional flow. Okay. And so we, we increase that water fractional flow in a series of increments. We measure the fractional flow where well, we actually we know the fractional flow because that's what's being imposed by the pumps, you're designing the experiment, you press the buttons on the pumps, so the fractional flow is known, and you measure the pressure difference across the phases. And it's quite simple mathematics then to uh, calculate the relative permeability. So this relative permeability will depend on the fractional flow and the saturation, clearly. Um, the saturations we are going to measure are from pore scale imaging. So we're actually also going to have a pore scale image so we can see exactly where the fluids go, okay? It will depend on the displacement path, whether or not you're injecting water or oil. Uh, the flow rate, the capillary number, but the main thing is the interaction between the wettability and the pore structure. So there are three types of behaviour we're going to discuss, water wet, mixed wet and oil wet, and we're going to start with the base case which is water wet. So what do I mean by water wet? Well this piece of rock, this is a dry piece of sandstone, it's made out of quartz, it naturally is water wet, it likes water, water will soak into, into this um, spontaneously the water likes the solid surface, it can interact with the solid surface. Oil, in contrast, does not interact with the solid. So oil wants to stay away from the surface, so it wants to be in the big pores, away from any boundaries. The water wants to be in the narrow restrictions in the nooks and crannies of the pore space. So what does this mean in terms of relative permeability? Here are some classic measurements on a sandstone, okay, um, for water flooding. So these are the water flood. So this is the water relative permeability. We start off with water initially present in the rock, but it hardly flows. Then as there's more and more water, the water relative permeability increases, but it stays low. Why? Because the water's in the narrow regions where there's least flow. The oil relative permeability, on the other hand, starts off at a value that's almost one, right? Because, well, it's occupying to begin with virtually all of the mobile pore space. And then it decreases. Okay, so you can see here it's decreasing as there's more and more water in the pore space, but for the same saturation it's high because where's the oil? It's in the big pores. Okay. But we don't get all the way to a water saturation of one. Why not? Because the oil gets trapped in the large pore spaces, the water moves into the nooks and crannies, surrounds the oil, and the oil is trapped. So let's think about some typical numbers here. Okay. Um, here the residual saturation is normally in the range of 20 
to 50%, in this case, about 30%. The oil relative permeability starts at one, goes down relatively sharply near the endpoint because it's been trapped. And the water relative permeability never gets beyond about 20%, maybe 5%, 10%, 20%. And the reason is because the water isn't in the big pores because that's where the oil's trapped. Okay. What's shown here, um, the crosses are the experiments. The line is a prediction, actually. If we know the pore structure and we know the displacement processes, we can actually predict this behavior quite accurately. Okay, so what's the opposite to water wet? It's oil wet. So what happens naturally is the oil moves into a reservoir and the oil is sitting there next to the rock for geologic time. And we can reproduce this in a lab. We only have to wait about a month. Okay. So what happens is surface active components in the crude oil adhere to the solid surface. Okay. And they make that surface oily. And you know, you know, oil and water don't mix. So now the solid surface likes oil and it doesn't like water. So it's a flip. Now the oil is in the narrow regions, the pore space, and the water goes through the big pores. So here is an experiment that's done now on a carbonate. Carbonates tend to have a, a larger wettability change. So this is a limestone, Estiolardins. You can see the pore structure here. You can see the black is the big pores, but there are also lots of little pores that you can't resolve in the image. So in fact, more than half the pore space just stays full of water that doesn't really flow much, okay? Then we inject water. If it's water wet, we see this classic behavior, the water relative permeability ends up at a relatively high value because there is all this extra connectivity in the small pores, okay? Here's the uh, relative permeability falling relatively sharply. If it's oil wet, if we've made the surfaces oily, the oil is in the narrow pores, so the oil relative permeability drops sharply because the water goes in the big pores, but the oil is in the narrow pores, less flow, so it's lower, okay? The water relative permeability is higher because the water is going in the bigger pores, okay? You also see the residual saturation is low, typically less than 20%. And that's because although the oil flows slowly in small pores, it's connected in the nooks and crannies and in layers. And so you can drain it down to a low saturation. So typically if it's oil wet, we see uh, residual saturations less than 20%. We see the final um, water relative permeability that's normally about 40% or greater. Right, sort of in that range. Okay. Now, what does that mean in terms of recovery? Well, if you look at where the relative permeabilities cross over, where they're the same value, and imagine we have a well, okay, and we're at that saturation. What that means, if the viscosities are the same, is we're producing equal amounts of oil and water. And at that point, you're producing quite a lot of water, okay? You want to be producing mainly oil and not so much water. Well, let's look at where we get to that, that point is if it's oil wet, that happens quickly because the water is mobile, flows readily, and the oil is less mobile. If it's more water wet, the water's held back in the pore space. You have to get to a higher water saturation for the water to flow so well. So that's better for recovery. What you want to do is you want to inject water, the water's held back, the oil preferentially flows, and that's what you're producing. Now, that's just a quick assessment. What you should do is you do it rigorously with the Buckley-Leverett equation. Right, which we've shown in previous videos. But this is a quick snap assessment, right? The oil wet case is not so favorable. But there's another type of behavior, which you might naively think is in between, but it actually isn't, is mixed wet. Because, okay, the uh, crude oil is in contact with the rock and it's in contact with the rock for a long time, but that doesn't mean to say every single bit of the surface is uniformly coated with something oily. Why not? Well, there's water initially present uh, in the reservoir, um, and also you have a rough surface and there's, there's water collecting in the nooks and crannies. And so what you really see when you observe the distribution of contact angle is that you, in many systems, you have a wide range of contact angles, have some regions that are water wet, some that are more oil wet, and everything in between. And we call this mixed wettability. So here's an, another example from our research group, um, which is a mixed wet reservoir carbonate from the Middle East. And we're showing the relative permeabilities. So let's look here. The oil relative permeability is shown in red. Okay. And what we see is what we saw before for the oil work case. The oil relative permeability does indeed drop sharply because now it's uh, the water's going in some of the bigger pores. Okay. Um, we see this layer drainage regime. It's very low flow in the nooks and crannies, draining to a saturation here of just over 10%. The water relative permeability gets up to a value above. 40%. So all of those are like the oil wet case. So why isn't it the oil wet case? Well, because the water relative permeability is a bit strange. 
the water relative permeability um, is very low. This is really a bit curious, right? Very, very low water relative permeability. Why, if it's going in the big pores? So what's shown here, this is uh, showing an image of the pore space of the rock. This is a couple of millimeters across. We're imaging it a resolution of a couple of microns. And the colors show water in the bigger pores, and the different colors are a blob of water that isn't connected to another one. So this, if you look, this represents the first situation. This represents the next. This is the next. This is the next. This is the next. And this is right at the end point. Okay. So what happens? Well, to begin with, there is some water initially present in the nooks and crannies and the very small pores that we can't image. So the water is flowing. Now we increase the water saturation. We're trying to push through more water. Where does the water want to go? Well, in the oil wet regions, it actually wants to go in the big pores, okay, just as before, right? Because it wants to stay away from the surface. So what it does is it fills a big pore. But that's all it does. It just fills a big pore, as you can see here, um, and another big pore, but they're not connected to each other. The water actually flows through the nooks and crannies and the little pore space and then moves out into a big pore, fills it, big change in saturation. But that water isn't actually connected to anything else. It's like, you know, opening up a road network for travel. So you open up a bit of the motorway between two junctions and close the junctions. Uh, like, you can't really move, can you? Because everything's blocked off still, right? So you've, you've got a nice wide road that you're allowed to drive on, but how do you get there? So it's exactly the same with this. So what you find is the water is filling the big pores. So there's a big change in saturation, right? Now, eventually they sort of get a bit connected, but they're not connected across the system. They're not creating a real circuit for flow. And it's only at a high saturation, it's sort of connected here. It's getting better connected here, right, at this point. Right at the end, it does. Eventually, the water goes through all the pores. It's well connected, high relative permeability, okay? But it, only at a high water saturation. So this is good for recovery. The water's actually held back. It's filling the wide areas, but not getting itself connected. So you might say, okay, but let's compare with the water wet case, right? How does it compare? Now, if it's a reservoir rock, there's no such thing as a water wet reservoir rock because it's been in contact with crude oil. But uh, we can do this with um, Bentheimer sandstone. Actually, this is in my hand is Bentheimer sandstone. So this is a sandstone. So we do it with a rock um, that hasn't had access to crude oil, so hasn't uh, changed its wettability. That's water wet. Okay. So again, uh, this is a rapid decrease in uh, oil relative permeability near the endpoint. This is there's a water wet shown in blue. Okay. The residual saturation is about forty percent and the water relative permeability stays low. Classic water wet behavior. The oil wet case, um, it starts off high simply because we've pushed more water in to begin with, um, but you see a more, even more rapid decrease in the oil relative permeability because now the oil's in the smaller pores, okay? We see this oil layer drainage regime, your lower residual saturation, um, moving up to uh, quite a high endpoint, but the water relative permeability here also stays low. Okay, so the crossover point is actually shifted to the right to more favorable recovery. And it's because, not because the oil, the oil roll perm's low, it's the water relative permeability stays low. And that's because of this limited connectivity. It fills some of the larger pores, but it doesn't get connected. So what does this mean in terms of recovery? Now, as I said, I'm not gonna go through the mathematical details in this presentation. So what I've done is I've shown some uh, figures from my book, okay? And what we've done is if you've got the relative permeability, if you know the relative permeability, you can solve the equations, the one-dimensional equation. And not only does it depend on the relative permeability, but it also depends on the viscosity ratio, okay? So you can actually do the calculation. So here are some example calculations. I'm not gonna go through all the details, but just to give you an idea. So here, these are synthetic. This is a water-wet relative permeability you know, the oil relative permeability goes straight down, the water relative permeability stays low. Weekly water wet with a bit more curvature, slightly less residual saturation. Mixed wet, lower residual saturation, but even lower water relative permeability. And then oil wet, which is where the water relative permeability gets very high. Okay, so these are sort of generic cases. Here is the solution to the buckley leverett equation where I've shown the dimensionless pore volumes uh, produced against dimensionless time, which is pore volumes injected. And notice that these curves go, only go out to about three because normally you're only injecting about one pore volume. 
Strongly water wet case, it depends on the viscosity ratio. So M, if it's high, which is here, is where the oil is much more, is the ratio of the oil viscosity to the water viscosity. But normally we have M values um, that are in the range of about uh, 10 or so. And what you see here is a recovery that's all shock. You're just producing oil, producing oil, producing oil. And in fact, there's just a shock. There's no rarefaction. And then immediately you go to the residual. So it's very efficient in terms of recovery, but you do leave behind a large residual saturation. If it's weakly water wet, this looks a bit more favorable because the residual oil saturation is lower. If it's oil wet, most of these cases with M around 10, in fact, you can get a case where there's not even a shock. It's all rarefaction. You have some water that moves very rapidly through the large pores, very early water breakthrough and actually very unfavorable recovery. So in general, oil wet cases are unfavorable. If we inject polymer, however, so we artificially hold back the water because it's high viscosity, we begin to see the benefit of the low residual saturation and the recoveries as shown on these curves can actually increase. But in many cases, the most favorable is the mixed wet case where you have the, even for ordinary viscosity ratios without adding anything to the water to make it viscous, what you find is you have a low residual oil saturation, but the water is held back in the pore space. Right? You sort of get the classic Buckley lever behavior um, with very favorable recoveries. Okay, so that was all I, all I wanted to say there. It's a brief presentation of this, but what it tries to do is tries to relate the physics of multi-phase flow to what it means in terms of local displacement recovery. And that's very powerful. And the only way of really appreciating that uh, yourself is in fact to go through the Buckley level of calculations. I just sh showed lots of graphs at the end, but you actually have to do those calculations yourself um, to, uh, to uh, appreciate that link. Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs>